Hello, gophers. How many are there out there? Plush ones? <laughs> uh, my name is Renee French. And um, I'm a writer and illustrator of comics and children's books, mostly. Um, but I'm also the creator of the Go Gopher. Uh, I'd like to talk about the gopher as a character, like his characteristics, his physicality, a little of his personality, and uh, then some guidelines you can follow if you're planning to make some of your own gopher artwork for your projects. You can see here um, in this robot picture that um, there, he's clever, he's resourceful, he can do anything with his arm and leg nubs, <laughs> even though, I mean, you, you might not think so, you know, to look at him, but he really can. Where did the go gopher come from? Uh, in, in the 1980s at Bell Labs, in the Unix room, Rob Pike, Dave Prezado, Luke Cardelli, and some others built the first system to put faces on mail messages. So up on the top here, this is from the 90s, you can see Russ Cox and Jim McKee, um, digitized versions of black and white Polaroids that they did. Uh, as their faces for the mail. And one day I was, I had a migraine and I made, to cheer myself up, a tiny little dime-sized drawing of a, a little bunny. And that's the one on the left there. Uh, real low res because it was real low res in real life. Um, and so one morning, and I sent it to Rob and he thought it would be really funny if he replaced Phil Winterbottom's face with that bunny. And Phil was not amused. <laughs> so Phil thought it would be actually better if, uh, to use that little bunny as the Plan 9 mascot. So I polished it up and it became Glenda, the Plan 9 mascot. And that's the one that you see there. Uh, so, Around that time, um, I was doing comics for Dark Horse and illustration work, and we decided some of the other guys in the Unix room actually wanted a cute little guy for their face. So um, this was just an ad for a glasses store, and you can see Rob was the little worm uh, <laughs> with the glasses, and then Ken Thompson was this beaver-looking dude there. And I think actually Sapa Mullinder was the one on the right, but I couldn't find evidence of that. Uh, this was a comic strip I did for a Swiss Institute uh, show magazine thingy. And if you look at the little bunny in the bottom with holding the knife, of course that was Russ Cox. <laughs> and he still, I still see that around. I don't know if he still uses it for his... And then I did a t-shirt design for WFMU, which was a radio station in the East. And uh, he was like a dancing hamster gopher guy. And Bob Flandrina ended up with that as his face. So I think every time Bob sees the gopher now, for a go gopher, he kind of probably feels like he's part of the family, because it's him. 2009, for the release of Go, the Go team were looking for a logo and a mascot, just like Plan 9. Um, and so I went back and pulled that WFMU shirt guy and made him into a line drawing, you can see in the middle, uh, so we could do t-shirts. Um, and this is the t-shirt. Uh, um, if you can avoid the head, this is the t-shirt the design. Um, and so that was really the first place he showed up. Uh, so not that long after that, actually, we decided to do a plush. Uh, there were, I think Squishables were doing a lot of really cool things, and we thought we went to Squishables. And after a lot of back and forth and colors and different so furs and stuff like that, we came up with this guy who is dreamy, really dreamy. I love him. 
So this is the night before, <laughs> uh, night before his big um, debut at Google I.O. He was a wigging a little bit. Um, I don't think he slept at all. <laughs> and what I really love about the plush gopher is that he's, he's incredibly expressive. You squish his face up, he looks like he's got a different expression. He's just, even with that stare, he kind of, this is him, them watching Game of Thrones. <laughs> And <laughs> I love a good Shatner. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, why wouldn't they want to hang out with the triples, right? Because uh, he's also, he's good at stare contests with these eyes. And he looks a little bit scared sometimes, but he can also look like he's really concentrating. So the plush gopher is sort of anything but chill. You know, he's kind of like any other emotion pretty much. He's sad and angry and all that, but except, but he's not very zen. He's, but so the vinyl gopher. Um, I was um, really getting into the LA designer vinyl scene um, and went to Kid Robot and worked with them, sent them sketches, and this sketch was the first sketch of what the vinyl gopher might look like. Um, and his little hands and feet, which are not as clear. Uh, but um, the, <laughs> and I did this uh, really rough, sculpy version that, they, that I think they just completely ignored when they were, because it was very clunky. The middle picture there is the, beautiful wax sculpt that they made out of the sketch. And I think I probably screamed when I saw it because it was so perfectly relaxing. And the vinyl is, he's, I just, he's like Valium, you know, he's like, he's just this, yeah, he's, you can hold him and he's really comforting. But anyway, go for styles. So, whoops, so if you are, doing a gopher for your own project, you have sort of three different styles to choose from to make your art. Um, the original, the next generation, the movies. And so the first one, the original, uh, you can take him and sort of Austin Go Language user group, they have a guy with a cowboy hat. So they just take the original guy and paste the cowboy hat and it's really cute. It works really well. Um, this is Andrew Duran's, the one in the middle, um, slickified, awesome camel toe feet guy that he made that was after the, <laughs> after the original gopher. Whoops. 1010. Woo! So 1010 is an uh, amazing artist who takes the vinyl uh, proportions and design, and he makes all of these amazing stickers and stuff. Just these, you know, with all kinds of, you know, barfing and laughing and crying and sleeping and everything. I just, uh, he's amazing. I myself prefer the plush version. I, uh, the plush proportions and the freak out and the wall-eyed and all that, I, and the little nubs, that's like, that's my favorite. He sort of evolved into that. So this one, is uh, part of uh, Rob, one of Rob's talks, the uh, con concurrency is not parallelism talk. I just colored it to make it all fancy looking. Physical characteristics. So this is a model sheet. I'm, I know you can't probably read these tiny pieces of text, but I'm gonna get in closer and explain it a little bit more. But this is a good reference. Um, these are used in animation and gaming and um, other things like that uh, uh, to describe a, ca a character and what he would do and what he, he wouldn't do. Um, and since I prefer the, the plush version, that's what these are. They're gonna be the plush version. His body is kidney bean shaped. He's kind of like 
his head is bigger than the bottom of his body, so his head's bigger than his butt, generally. But you can go, if he's turned three quarters, he's pretty much a kidney bean, or a kidney, as Rob likes to point out. <laughs> From the front, <laughs> um, you can see really his proportions. His eyes are, you know, a quarter of his body height, pretty much. And then his little nose and whis uh, whisker pads and teeth are just jammed up in between there. Um, not right in between, but pretty much. Um, he's blue, he's like a greenish blue. He's all that color except his nubs and his whisker pad are all the same color. It, and his tail uh, are all sort of this pretty pinky peach. And then his nose and his inside of his ears are gray. They're the same color. So the eyeball thing, um, he has no eyebrows, pretty much, as a rule. So if you're trying to express something, like more intensely express something, you can do angry by, instead of putting eyebrows on there like this, you, you can put um, you can just sort of mush his eyes down to mimic where the eyebrow would be. Or if he's sad, you know, you do the other way. Um, and it really works. It's, it's incredibly effective. You can just move his eyes a little bit, make them not so round, and you get a lot of emotion out of that. Um, he's double-toothed or single-toothed, but they should be in the center. No teeth, like, off to the side. Um, centered, and uh, the ear is pretty self-explanatory here. Um, yeah, all right. <laughs> uh, his belly fold, well, so if you bend the gopher's body, he folds, like his belly folds just like your belly would fold, for those of you people who have belly fat. Um, I've seen him sometimes just sort of drawn in a curve and it doesn't, it's, it, well, this is cuter anyway, so. <laughs> That's important. So when he's running or when he's moving, you, I mean, he seems like he can't move because his, his legs are so tiny, but man, he really runs fast. Um, and the evidence is the shadows underneath. He's, he's like clear off the ground all the time. and. Uh, Ears blow back a bit, maybe some sweat, motion lines, whatever, and his little arms. How does the gopher hold things? It's a mystery. He has two ways of holding things, actually. He holds something under his arm, or he just holds it. As you can see in this illustration, um, I'm not sure how that pink guy got up on that stool, but, but he did, he did. That's the trick, he does it. They can do anything. So the guy in the front there holding the very thick uh, punch card, under, he's holding it under his arm, and he's asking for a paper cut under there. And then the guy, the purple guy, is just sort of touching the magnifying glass, looking for bugs. This was for the fifth anniversary um, of Go. This is how he holds things. <laughs> Van der Waals is how he holds things. It's hard to see, I know, it's hard to see, you really need the magnifier to see that. You can't see it at all when he's not close up. The gopher does famous poses. Um, so I thought it might illustrate sort of the limitations of his anatomy a bit. He has limitations and yet he can do anything. Um, it's weird like that. <laughs> so. Uh, Botticelli's Birth of Venus. Um, you can notice that his left arm, his left arm, uh, is just down at his side. It actually does not creep down to his crotch area. 
Like it doesn't move out of the socket and then come down. It just stand, it's where it starts. So he only has so much nub distance. And then the other one is sort of just work, sort of. So <laughs> I think he kills this one, really, because he doesn't. Bruce Lee, the flying kick. So here's the, this is a good ex ex uh, example though. He, so his front two limbs, um, the punchy kicky ones, are straight. And so he can do that. The, the back two, uh, his arm, he has no elbows. So it just comes out of the socket in the direction that Bruce Lee's arm does, and then just is missing the other part of the arm. And then um, also his leg, no knees, so straight out and then forget about this other thing. And <laughs> <laughs> the bullet dodge. I think also he does this one really well, that his legs come like clear out of his pelvis and down, and Keanu, he has legs with knees and stuff, so he can do that. <laughs> gophers in talks and shirts. I'm just going to show some of the gopher things that I've done for various things and people. Uh, Rob's concurrency is not parallelism talk. Um, these were so fun to do <laughs> because it was almost like doing animation without doing animation, without the drudgery of doing animation. And these guys, I mean, this was sort of the beginning of the ultra, ultra bean-shaped nub arm and light guys, right? And they're so, the guy, I love my favorite guy is the guy holding the book um, up in the upper left-hand corner there. This was for Andrew Duran's Go For Gophers. And we did stickers of this. And my favorite's the square guy, actually. Uh, this was for a t-shirt, but it's been used after that for, I colored it to make it all pretty and everything, but that's a Turing machine in the middle there. So I don't know about the wrench, but sorry. This is, um, was for a blog post about the history of the, of the Go Go for, and, which is you guys should all check out because it's a really nice blog post. Rob and Andy did it. It's, and this is kind of a, you know. I like that the guy in the middle is from the front, but he's not symmetrical, so he kind of looks a little more goofy. Last year's GopherCon. And this was um, the GopherCon people made this amazing vinyl of based on that drawing, and it was, it was fantastic. And this photograph is by Nathan Youngman, and it's beautiful. I love this. This is this year's, and actually Eric Zelaya and I did this one together. Um, he had the idea for the balloon and the stuff, and we, we sent it back and forth and did it together, and it was really fun. Okay, so this is some of my favorite gopher art by other people. Um, 1010 is, I think, you know, he's, he's amazing. Laura Durmile for Docker. That's why I put her name down there because I can't say it. She has this amazing way of making the gopher be the gopher and he's, he's you know, his proportions are all weird but he's really in spirit the gopher. I love him, he's really cute. Every drawing she does of him is really cute. This is Steven Pitcher for Go Play Chess and that gopher there, the, the one on the left, his really funny slump and he's got the walleyes going on and everything, it's just beautiful. Uh, and the gopher room key by uh, Manny, I had his name, um, Manny, now I can't find his name, sorry about that, Pharaoh, I think, is dead on perfect, amazing. The keys, these guys are just great. So this was a talk by Daniel Whitenack, 
uh, yesterday. And everybody was telling me this guy did a talk with gophers in his thing, and they were amazing. And I saw them, and this is just incredible. I love this, this bit. It's really good. And of course, the uh, women with no faces behind the booths <laughs> of, um, I just love the whole, the whole GopherCon organized thing is just, it turned out great. And Kim Doan's wicked cool costumes at Google, they were great. So, I think that the, the key here is um, that the gopher is resourceful and clever, can do anything he sets out to do, even though he appears that that might be difficult. He has, he can do it. Um, and I have um, a copy of the model sheet that I showed earlier like this for you guys, which you can get from me or um, we'll have them in the Go Project room tomorrow uh, for the, at the hack day. And that's it. <laughs>